Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy East Last. I can't remember what I usually say here because it's been so long. Something about, you know, modern life and it's tough being a man. I don't know. Ryan, Matt, how are you? Good and well, mate. Long time no see. Maybe we'll start with Ryan because you've, I guess since we probably last talked, which is maybe four months ago on Daddy East Last, I should say we're planning to do four more podcasts and calling it quits. We're, you know, we're not going to be left high and dry, just short of 200 like Usman Khawaja in the Sydney Test issue. We're on a 196 podcast. We want to crack the 200 and then we're probably going to call it quits with Daddy Eats Last. So it's been a while since we've done one. What have you been up to? You've been everywhere and, you know, you, your work situation might have changed. What's what's going on? Yeah, it's been it's been a very busy four months. Part of the reason that we haven't caught up, but um, I am looking forward to raising the bat for 200. <laughs> Um, yeah, in a, in a snapshot, where have we been? We've been to Australia, we've been to Portugal, we've been all around Europe, I finished Cambridge, and um, we're now in Barcelona, uh, working on and speaking Spanish for another six weeks, and then the um, the jet-setting life will be retired, so we'll, we'll hang up the boots for 30 years last, but I'll also hang up the boots for... Um, living out of a suitcase and being an international businessman and we'll move home. Um, we'll take the fur baby with us and then um, hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll join you guys, which are staring at me in um, very rugged up pajamas in winter in Australia, <laughs> um, tired on a Sunday, no doubt having run after the kids all weekend. So Hopefully, uh, hopefully joining that life in the near future. Well, in fairness, it's going to be six degrees in Melbourne. It's probably going to be twenty-five overnight in Brisbane. And I think Matthew, <laughs> having moved up there, you know, fifteen years ago, he's just he's he's gone full Queenslander now. He just feels the cold. He gets around to <laughs> you know sandals and socks. He's gone full Queensland. I'm not at sandals and socks yet. No, no, but I do feel <laughs> do feel the cold. Although it doesn't help my wife. Sleeps windows open. There's no blinds on the windows either. So no blinds on the windows. No. Isn't it light at like half past three in the morning? Uh, we have this conversation each year. Come when is it? October when it starts? At, yeah, four thirty in the morning. I'm like, please, we just get a sheet or something. Like, no, no, no. I like to wake up naturally. Naturally is with the blinds, and then the light comes through the blinds on the side and wakes you up that way, so it's not like blaring gently, sunshine gently. at five. Yeah, gently, yeah, right. gently. She just likes just yeah. getting smashed with a sledgehammer of light at three, four in the morning. So I don't put socks on my eyes when I go to sleep. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll post up a I'll post up a face mask, mate. I'm, I'm the, I've got a I've got a face mask which has got a you can play music through it as well, so it can soothe you to sleep. With you know, oh, you can wow. have some. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. It's the best twenty bucks I ever spent. To be honest, when I had a kid, that's a good tip. Face mask mm -hmm. where you can put some. Uh, it's got the. Uh, this is not 3G, not Wi Fi, Bluetooth. It's a Bluetooth one. You kind of wrap it around so you can kind of just float off while the kids screaming in the background. I do love listening to a bit of rain as I go to sleep. So. Yeah. So when you're eventually chasing a non fur baby around, Ryan, uh, that, that's, a, that's a hot tip. I like what the you, sound of that. What have you been up to, Matthew? It's been a while. What have you, what have you been doing in the uh, interim? You've been renovating, you know, renovating a business premises. What have you, what have you been yeah. up to? Yeah. Um, last four months. I wish I could say I was doing what Ryan was doing and traveling around. Just make I'm it up. Nowhere. Yeah, make it up. All right. <laughs> um, I've been abseiling down, you know, Kosciuszko and, and things like this. No, no. Um, what have I been doing? Yes, renovating. So, yep, as per probably the... Last time we spoke, the, the shop is still being renovated. Actually, we've got a IKEA kitchen coming on Thursday, which is there's two or three stages left until this thing can start getting leased out. So doing the kitchen is one of them. So it's going to arrive Thursday. Then it's um, Flatpak City next weekend. We'll get all that set up. Um, apart from that, I mean, Soccer World Cup, Netball World Cup. Netball is a big thing in our family. We uh, Our eldest daughter, Mia, plays a lot. So she's been following that, which is it's great to see these women's sports um yeah, getting so much attention, which is good. Yeah, and Australia made Australia made the final of the. They're in the final of the netball against England, aren't they? Correct. Yeah, we're playing uh, tomorrow morning, one forty-five. I think so. We lost to England um, a week or two ago, a bit last week. I think by one or two points. So to be, um, yeah, hopefully the girls can get it done. You getting up in the morning to watch it? Oh, uh, possibly. Yeah, if not, I'll just 
beauty of KO, those minis, um, I might, you know, get up early tomorrow morning, five o'clock or something, just to avoid any seeing in the news and getting results during the day without just, seeing it. So. Just after the natural light pings you in the eyes. <laughs> Well, it's August, so it's not till six six thirty at the moment. So that's okay. It's okay. That's, I can deal with that. Yeah, that's that's why I camp naturally. Uh, Silver still, linings. Still mind boggling. You don't have blinds. That's yeah, that's a thing. Mm. Well, I've not been doing much in the last. Five. I don't think I've done anything in the last four months. I've probably the the most boring of all. I'm not renovating. I haven't been travelling anywhere. I don't know what I've done in the last four months. Just survival, day by day. Just you know, just bare hands. Just just crawling along through life as best I can. But that's a good. That is a good lead into Ryan. Like you, you are coming back to Australia. You had on your list of your bucket list of things to do, Mont Blanc. Have you done Mont Blanc? I have. So among all the travel and everything, uh, I managed to fit climbing. Uh, I think it's Western Europe's tallest mountain. Might even be Europe's tallest mountain. But um, no, managed to finish. Uh, summiting Mont Blanc um, which was something that's been on the cards for three years it was one of those 2020 COVID trips had a milestone birthday wrapped it in that and then obviously COVID got in the way 21 I think COVID still got in the way 22 it was booked to be in heat wave uh, not dissimilar to what's happening now um, so it was pretty dangerous. So we pulled the plug on it then. And June this year actually um, got my way into Switzerland and then on to France and um, up and down a mountain, which was a shitload harder than I actually thought it would be. Was it um, harder than we got there in the end? Harder than the marathon? Much harder than a marathon. Yeah. In in what way? Like obviously you've both done marathons, so Matty be pretty familiar with the pain and suffering of a marathon. In in what way was the suffer I guess it's suffering then if it's say it was harder. In what way is the suffering different? Yeah, it's um so it's it's different. I suppose a couple of things. Like I went in a reasonably fit, probably not as fit as I wanted to, um, but physically it was okay. Um, mentally it was really really tough. So we went with a guide, and I did it with my friend Nikki, um, who her and I went and we did uni together, and um, been friends for over a decade. And so the first three days we climb the Swiss Alps, which was absolutely stunning. So we got to about 3,500 metres in the air. So you sort of do that. You start to acclimatise, you practice. Um, whilst Mont Blanc, it's like the beginning of initial climbs. So it... It's basically like you, you're there with ice picks, you're there with um, harnesses, you are rock climbing, you're, you know, vertical at, at certain points, you're hooked into rocks at different points, you're walking on glaciers at different points um, with crampons. So all of that was completely new and, and unbeknown to me. And whilst it says that you can basically do this climb without really any technical experience because you will learn and so forth. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. And I would definitely do, if I had my time again, a little bit of technical work on the climb. But then, so we did the three days Swiss Alps and then you do three days. So get to a certain point, which is about 3,800 um, up Mont Blanc. And then day two, you look to summit which is 40, 4,800 on the top. And then um, day three, you you descend. And that, and that involves rock climbing and going across like traverses that do have falling rocks from the top from time to time. So you, like, if you're tired, you can't stop there. Um, and I suppose the altitude and just the mental, like you're climbing for anywhere for six to eight hours in, in one go. 
and then you get to a cabin or like a hut and you'll you'll rest but that six to eight hours you need to be mentally switched on the whole time because you know you put one foot wrong and and every year a number of people um unfortunately do do pass away on Mont Blanc so the the mental taxation along with the physical taxation is probably and to do that for six days straight plus the altitude and fortunately I only got altitude sickness after summiting on the descending down um but yeah can combine all of that and by far one of the toughest physical and mental challenging things that I've done would you would you do another mountain or is that are you one and done like my approach to uh, having children I'm <laughs> your approach to children I like that I think um I'm very happy to to retire from any um snow or glacier mountains so anything that involves putting on crampons and ice picks and that kind of thing i'd love to do um i would love to do kilimanjaro which is actually slightly higher than mont blanc but it's not um it's not a technical climb and it doesn't involve any digging into snow and um nearly as as dangerous things and i'd love to do machu picchu in south america but that's a that's a bit of a small one but i I think other than those yeah doing mont blanc certainly didn't inspire me to um to want to do everest or any of the other tough snow mountains i'm quite happy to retire with one is there anything else looking at Sorry, Matthew, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I'm just flicking through the photos you sent through, Ryan, and it, it really does, yeah, look sort of roots the world type of um, situation here. <laughs> I mean, you, you look down at, you're looking down at high mountain peaks from where you are, um, which is absolutely amazing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the views and like the the joy of doing it, um was incredible and like the views like pretty much when you hit over 3000 meters you do go above um certain cloud levels so you are at times climbing in the clouds you're at times looking and obviously for those who don't know so mont blanc is um the highest mountain within the swiss and french and italian alps so at various points in the climb so we would start like I flew into Geneva, we drove to Chamonix. That's where you kind of start the base of Mont Blanc. There's also different routes. So you can do an Italian route. You can do a, a Swiss route. Um, the French one is the easiest, thankfully. But yeah, so at, at different times, we actually would start on the French Alps and then we would sleep in the Swiss Alps because we would have crossed a country. And then by the time that you're at the top of Mont Blanc, if you look three different ways, you can look at Italy, France, and Switzerland, and you can see mountain peaks from all of those ranges um, because obviously you're on the, you're on the highest mountain. So, I mean, the views were insane. Um, the experience was phenomenal, and like definitely a bucket list, and super happy to have done it in in life situation. Um, but I should say, so we were so fortunate with the weather like even our guide was saying we had the perfect like it was a little bit rainy and shitty day one and that was the easiest part and then after that we were just sun and it was great and we were so fortunate and really fortunately for us as well and our guide was um this lovely italian guy but he's he's very focused on safety which is very important obviously uh, but he's also a little bit blunt, which is quite nice. And he pretty much said, um, anything short of the weather that we got, based on our technical ability, we wouldn't have, like, he wouldn't have been comfortable to summer. Wow. And we probably wouldn't have gotten to the top. And um, sadly, sort of after we climbed so we we got to the top and we got down and everything was 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 really good um but three days later one of the the ridges 
that you go across, which was the ridge where he basically, you get to the beginning of it and you get a bit of a pep talk that says, when we start, we don't stop. We get to the other side, we get to that rock cover and it's probably, I don't know, 400, 500 meters maybe. But basically it's like you you, you go across this because at the top, um, it's very common for rocks to fall. So, you know, you, you time your your run, shall we say, and, and 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 you get across there and it's pretty it's pretty exhausting. And you are like there was a couple of times where there was a few rock falls um where we had to do a couple of interesting movements. But anyway, so three days later there was actually like a full rock fall avalanche down there and it's blocked blocked the trave uh, the traverse. And um unfortunately a few people just didn't make it back. Uh, and that was three. So the weather turned uh, pretty much after our climb. And then a few people, um, unfortunately, passed away on there. And for about two or three weeks, pretty much nobody was able to cross that bridge. That's so, insane. Holy shit. Yeah. It, and, and it is interesting. Like when you are up there, like you'll leave at five, six in the morning because everything's calmer in the morning, apparently in the mountains. You end up learning this. And your goal is to get to the next hut by between 12 and 2, have lunch, and you will stay in the hut for the rest of the afternoon. Um, and generally in the afternoon, the weather does start to turn and it does get a bit interesting. And also if it heats up too much and obviously ice and so forth. But like sitting in some of those huts and just watching like a storm would come through. I remember one afternoon and it bucketed and it came in about 60 seconds. And 15 minutes later, it was completely gone. But if you were caught out there, you're like hunkering down and you're not moving and, you know, it could last for a long time. So, yeah, it's it was incredible to see nature and glaciers and mountains and the elements like that. It was also quite uh, humbling to see the elements that you you were basically uh, aspects um you were pretty much you'd succumb to the elements whatever they may be so if they turned you were you were in a lot of trouble and unfortunately a couple of days after yeah we summited that is what happened on the mountain so super lucky uh super grateful really really glad to have gotten to the top I uh, appreciate the bluntness of my guide to go, you guys absolutely lucked out on the weather. Otherwise, you weren't good enough to get to the top. <laughs> um, but it's also probably, hence your question before, Kane, would, would I want to do another one? It's probably made my decision to not want to do another one, given what happened a couple of days after. Yeah. Wow. Kilimanjaro makes some sense. So, like, it's a different sort of different sort of challenge and it sounds like that would be a safer summit to try yeah much safer so and interestingly when you mount it and there's like three types of boots which will kind of give you an indication on like hiking boots kind of give you an indication of how hard a mountain is so there's level one which is like if you just went and got some hiking boots tomorrow Dunlop and you just volleys. wanted to walk around some parks yeah they might be level minus one <laughs> but just but you 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 ba your basic hiking boots level two um which gives a bit more structure um and that's what you need for or that's what's suggested for Kilimanjaro and Machu Picchu and those kind of ones then there's level three which can click onto crampons and that was the minimum for Mont Blanc and then there's like level three plus which is that and they're just basically level three, but on steroids. And that's what you use for Everest. Um, so yeah, Kilimanjaro is, you know, much more of a hike than it is a rock climbing and ice picking into bloody walls and um, glaciers and stuff. So is that on your 40 year old? So I picked the hardest one first. Is that on your 40 year old bucket list? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to do. I'd like to do Machu Picchu and Kilimanjaro probably, yeah, over the next decade. But tie it tie, tied in with you know a nice holiday to Africa and South America and yeah. Wow, that's amazing! I'm glad you finally got to do it because it, like it's it had been on your bucket list the whole time you've been there and you know through pan 
the pandemic and all sorts of things, which is very hard. But you got to do it. You know, seven weeks left in Euros until you come home. So yeah, you got it in. Got it in in the last couple of months. Exactly. I think. Um, I think if I didn't get it done this year, um, and then kept pursuing it, especially when we moved back to Australia, my wife may have killed me. So I'm I'm pretty sure I was on the last leg of being able to do the climb. Yeah, it's probably your last chance. It's not really the same when you go. You of you know climb Kosciuszko. You could probably do that with a picnic in the in a, in an afternoon. Exactly. All right. I mean, it's a probably good place to end this one, this episode of Daddy Exercise. I think it's, this might be episode 197. That leaves us with three more, three probably three more Daddy Exercise to go. Uh, we'll be back with another episode shortly. Thank you very much for sharing that, Ryan. That's that's amazing. And yeah, I, I can't imagine climbing that. And kudos to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.